Another North Carolina city has run afoul of the state constitution because of its food truck rules. That's the argument in a new lawsuit. And joining us to discuss the details is Bob Belden. He is an attorney with the Institute for Justice. And Bob, uh, this suit has just been filed. Tell us about it, please. Thanks for having me on, Mitch. Uh, yes, we filed a constitutional lawsuit this morning against the city of Jacksonville over its protectionist anti-food truck regulations. Uh, primarily, there are three regulations at issue. The first is a proximity ban. So food trucks are not allowed to operate within 250 feet of a restaurant or uh, residential property. And those two restrictions alone prohibit food trucks from operating in more than 96% of the city of Jacksonville. But there's another proximity ban that prohibits food trucks from operating within 250 feet of each other. So the 96% figure is actually a conservative estimate. But the city council in Jacksonville actually went even further than that to protect local restaurants from food truck competition. They regulate the signage available to food trucks, and they also impose a $300 annual permit fee that, that far exceeds their cost to regulate food trucks. So, so we filed a constitutional lawsuit uh, under the North Carolina Constitution this morning. Now, I understand that usually in a case like this, you would see a food truck operator who would be concerned because his or her constitutional rights have been violated. Uh, in your case, am I correct that you have food truck operators, but also someone who does not own a food truck, but would like to be able to have a food truck on her property. That's absolutely right, Mitch. This is a unique and sort of cutting edge case in the food truck area because we are asserting property rights claims on behalf of our client, Nicole Gonzalez. You can see I'm sort of, I'm not in a normal office here. I'm in her general goods store that uh, sits on property that she and her husband own here in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina. And even though the store that I'm in right now used to be a restaurant. She's not allowed to host a food truck here on her property because she's within 250 feet of properties that have restaurants and uh, there's residential property nearby. So um, not only uh, not only are we dealing with Tony and Ray's economic liberties being stifled by the protectionism here, Nicole and her husband own this property and it would be safe for them to have food trucks here serving food to their neighbors in Jacksonville. And it would be great, not only for um, not only for Nicole's freedom, but also for her business here to have a food truck here, bringing its customers, introducing them to her store, seeing what she has to offer. And uh, the, the research and, and studies are clear that not only does that benefit Nicole and any food truck owner like Tony and Ray, it's a great benefit to the community and the city at large. Tell us a little bit about, you mentioned the names Tony and Ray. So these are food truck operators? Yeah, our two clients, Tony and Ray. Tony's a Marine vet veteran, as is Ray. Tony's been here for about 20 years, and he runs a food truck called The Spot. And he is originally from Florida, and he sort of realized Eastern North Carolina didn't have much Florida-style seafood. So he started making it for the folks at his church here in town. And, you know, he's an entrepreneur, and he said, I should, I should start a food truck. And that's what he did. And uh, Ray has a food truck called the Cheesesteak Hustle, and he was also a Marine veteran, served in Afghanistan. And when he got home, uh, he had the idea, same thing. Uh, there aren't that many great cheesesteaks around here. Maybe I could do something. And um, as a part of our as a part of our case launch today, our announcement, uh, we had the guys give out some of their food for free, so they were not running afoul of any laws. Um, and I, I have to say that the the lobster roll from Tony's truck is really good and. Uh, Ray has a cheese steak that has flaming hot Cheetos on the top. And uh, don't tell my wife, but I had a little bit of both of them. So uh, <laughs> you're, you're making me hungry here. We, <laughs> we mentioned at the top that this is a suit that's filed based on uh, alleged violations of the North Carolina Constitution. In, in what ways do these rules from Jacksonville violate people's constitutional rights? So every... Uh, every North Carolina citizen has a constitutional right to earn an honest living and a common occupation free from protectionist regulation. And every property owner, like Nicole, has a right to use her property safely and reasonably free from unreasonable regulation. And so 
we, we, we've we discussed already how Nicole would like to host Tony or Ray, and that would be beneficial to the two of them and to the community. We think that it violates the North Carolina Constitution for the city council to insert itself with its regulations that are anti-food truck and breaking up that sort of voluntary arrangement that just makes people better off and doesn't harm anyone. So the suit was just filed this morning. Uh, what what sort of uh, timetable are we looking at? This is the type of thing that that may go through the courts for a while. Yeah. So the next step now that we filed the complaint is to serve the complaint and the summons on all the defendants, and then they will, um, under normal circumstances, they'll have thirty days to file an answer, which is basically an admission or denial of the allegations we've made. But they'll um, they'll also have the opportunity to file sort of dispositive motions that say, um, even if everything we say is true about what they've done, uh, that wouldn't violate the Constitution. So um, we're looking at, you know, another development maybe in the next 30 or 45 days. And, um, you know, we are we're always receptive to reasonable offers after we file a lawsuit. And so if we hear something before then, um, you know, we're, we're always willing to listen. But. That's the official timetable. Yeah, that leads into the next question, because uh, this is a, a legal issue now and it could go through the courts and, and take a while. But my guess is both you and your clients would be happy if this lawsuit sparked the people of Jacksonville to say, well, wait a minute, maybe we got this wrong and rethink this policy. So uh, we are, um, you know, we're lawyers first and we want the best thing for our clients. And the city sort of coming to its senses and getting rid of these ridiculous restrictions would be, uh, you know, the best thing for everybody because it could happen right away and it's in their power to do that. But um, North Carolina law on the right to earn an honest living and the right to use your private property safely and reasonably is very good for us. And we're prepared to litigate all the way to the North Carolina Supreme Court uh, to, to establish that precedent firmly uh, here in North Carolina. We're talking about Jacksonville and its rules, and you mentioned the specifics and why they are particularly egregious from from your vantage point. But this is not something that's unique to Jacksonville, is it? We've seen other communities put rules like this in place that that run afoul of protecting people's constitutional rights, correct? Yeah, there are other jurisdictions who have tried this. Uh, we 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 filed a lawsuit against another town in North Carolina that had a similar uh, sort of requirement that nobody could operate a food truck unless the owner of the food truck also owned a brick and mortar restaurant. Uh, and, and the goal there was to protect restaurants from food truck competition, like the the goal here in Jacksonville was to protect restaurants from food truck competition. But you know, this is something you often see if you're in the kind of line of work that IJ is, where we're constantly challenging local government overreach. If a city like Jacksonville does something like impose a, a signage restriction that prohibits food trucks from putting a feathered flag out to let people know that the food truck is on a property on a given day, a smaller town nearby like Richlands or Sneeds Ferry or Hampstead, you know, they're, they're going to look at that and say, oh, maybe we should do that tomorrow. But Interestingly, you know, that is that is not what has happened in this place, because in in preparing for this lawsuit and talking with our clients, there are a number of forward thinking local governments in this part of North Carolina, like Wilmington, that that really uh, take note of the economic benefit of having food trucks in their communities and increasing foot traffic in neighborhoods and getting people to buy local and shop local, uh, like at Nicole's store. And um, so it is a. Uh, it's definitely a tale of two two kinds of cities, um, but it is we're trying to stem the tide of this kind of this kind of overreach. Many of the people watching this are going to be fans of of food trucks and will understand this. But for folks who don't use food trucks, don't really care one way or another about them, why is this something that they should also pay attention to and be interested in a positive outcome for your clients? So. I think that people should be in favor of it because it is uh, it's an activity that benefits people who are interested in it and doesn't harm people who don't really want to shop at a food truck. Food trucks are subject to the same kind of health and safety oversight that brick and mortar restaurants are. The county inspects uh, the food trucks and their commissaries, a, a local kitchen that they're required to have, inspects them twice a year. So they're serving 
safe, delicious food. And so somebody who somebody who's not that familiar with food trucks or not that interested in it, you know, I, I would say you shouldn't be opposed to it because it offers people in your community more convenient, more affordable options for food, and it increases foot traffic for local businesses. So, you know, a, a, a rising tide lifts all boats. And that's why somebody, even somebody who doesn't like Florida style seafood or cheesesteaks should be happy about the idea that Tony and Ray are going to be able to earn their living selling their food from their trucks here. Well, once again, is it a new lawsuit challenging the food truck rules in Jacksonville, North Carolina? We've been speaking with Bob Belden. He is an attorney with the Institute for Justice working with the plaintiffs in that case. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mitch. Thank you.